Hi, welcome to the podcast. Today in Canada, we celebrate something very special on November 11th. It used to be called Armistice Day, but now we know it as Remembrance Day. And we celebrate at 11 a.m. on November 11th every year. November 11th was picked because it marks the end of the hostilities during the First World War in 1918. Time for some history, eh? According to the Royal Canadian Legion, poppies were mentioned in relation to war over 110 years before Canada decided to adopt it as a symbol of remembrance. In the early 19th century, during the Napoleonic Wars, people noticed poppies growing over the graves of soldiers. The raw battlegrounds flourished with bright red poppies. Scientists today understand that the chalk soil was enriched with lime from the battle rubble, and this permitted the poppies to thrive. After the war ended, the poppies disappeared again. In the First World War, the landscape was again disturbed. The chalk mixed with the lime, and the poppies flourished once more. Now we're going to talk a little bit about a gentleman named John McRae. John McRae was born in Canada, in Guelph, Ontario. He was a gunner in the South African War. Upon his return, he became a professor of medicine in Montreal at McGill University. When the First World War broke out, he enlisted to become a gunner again. But because there was a shortage of doctors, he was sent instead as a brigade surgeon. In April 1915, McRae joined 18,000 soldiers, including his friend Alexis Helmer, in the 1st Canadian Division near Ypres in Belgium. The Second Battle of Ypres lasted six incredibly terrible weeks and McRae worked for 17 days on the wounded Canadian and Allied soldiers. Shortly after this, he lost his close friend, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, and according to his journal entries, McRae officiated at the burial. Near Alexis's grave the next day, he wrote a poem called In Flanders Fields. He sent a final copy of the poem to the Spectator magazine in London, but it was rejected. However, a journalist who visited McRae in the field hospital took a copy back to his publisher. And, on December 8th, 1915, the poem was published in Punch Magazine, a weekly British magazine. McCray's name was not initially attached to this publication. His poem received worldwide fame, and McCray continued to work as a surgeon in Canadian hospitals during the war. His work was tireless, with very little breaks. On January 28th, 1918, Unfortunately, he died of pneumonia. He was buried in France at the Wimro Cemetery. He is mostly remembered for his poem, but he is also commemorated in Canada in the Canadian War Museum with a special exhibit gallery. Now you must be wondering, why do Canadians wear poppies? Well, the symbolism starts here. The Ladies Home Journal reprinted McRae's poem on Armistice Day in 1918. It had been retitled, We Shall Not Sleep. In November 1918, a woman named Moina Bell Michael read this reprint in the Ladies' Home Journal. She was inspired by the poem, and in her own memoir, she described how she thought of making silk poppies and selling them to help veterans. Her efforts were great, and by April 1920, poppies became the symbol of remembrance for the American Legion. In 1921, Anna Guérin brought the campaign to France, and Lillian Freeman continued the Canadian campaign. In Britain, the poppy also grew in significance. The well-known Canadian author, Lucy Maud Montgomery, author of the Anne of Green Gables series in 1908, also got involved and inspired with the poem. In 1921, she wrote a fictitious story based on the poem, and it was Canada's first home front novel called Rilla of Ingleside. In the novel, there was a homage to McRae's poem, as well as a story to highlight the importance of women's roles during the war on the home front. Montgomery had had first-hand experience, and she was able to portray the Red Cross and Junior Red Cross volunteer services of girls and women. Also in 1921, the Great Wars Association, which was a Canadian veterans group, adopted the poppy as their remembrance symbol. 
and four short years later, in 1925, the Canadian Legion was formed, and they continued this connection. The poppies used to be made by disabled veterans, and all the proceeds of the sales would help fund the veterans' needs. The red flower is generally worn on the left lapel near your heart. It has stayed an important symbol for Canadians, as well as in Great Britain, other nations of the Commonwealth, and in the United States. These poppies are worn two weeks prior to November 11th, which is considered Remembrance Day in Canada. They serve to remind the wearer of the peacekeeping, the sacrifices made to keep our freedom, to honor the fallen, and those who served for their countries. With over 250 species of poppies, the red poppy that was initially called the corn poppy was renamed to the Flanders poppy. And an interesting tidbit, the 25-cent coin with the red poppy was released by the Royal Canadian Mint in 2004, and it was the first circulated coin in the world to have color. For those who may not have heard the poem, it is told in the viewpoint of the deceased soldier. Now, I considered at length if I should read the poems or not, because there have been incredible renditions read. However, I decided to read it for you in French and in English, and to see what you think. John McRae's In Flanders Fields In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow, Between the crosses, row on row, That mark our place, and in the sky, The larks still bravely singing fly, Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, To you from failing hands we throw, The torch, be yours to hold it high, If ye break faith with us who die, We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders field. And this is the French adaptation by Jean Parizeau. Le poème en français est nommé Au champ d'honneur. Au champ d'honneur, les coquelicots sont parsemés de l'eau en l'eau. Auprès des croix et dans l'espace, les alouettes devenues las mêlent leurs chants au sifflement des obusiers. Nous sommes morts, nous qui songions la veille encore, à nos parents, à nos amis, c'est nous qui reposons ici, au champ d'honneur. À vous, jeunes désabusés, à vous de porter l'oriflamme et de garder au fond de l'âme le goût de vivre en liberté. Acceptez le défi, sinon les coquelicots se faneront au champ d'honneur. Thank you so much for joining me on this Petit Pod. Hopefully it was helpful in understanding why Canada celebrates Remembrance Day. It has personally been a part of our family traditions for a very long time, and the poem is extremely touching. And having learned more and more about history as I've grown older, it's become really important to honor these traditions. And for the end of the episode, don't forget to catch me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can visit the website for more information, bonus on the episodes. Thank you to my husband, Jamie, and our brood of kids, as well as our families and our friends, for their encouragement to keep me adventuring through history. Un grand merci. Merci.